Hi there, it's Lee here. Hope you're doing great. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the uh, new miner that's been recently released by Claymore. Um, he's created a dual Ethereum and Decreed uh, GPU miner. So the advantage of this miner is that you can actually mine two coins at the same time uh, without uh, necessarily using twice as much power. It will use a uh, a little bit more power. Um, I don't have the exact um, details. Um, I would guess somewhere between five and ten percent, maybe more power. Uh, but you will be mining two coins at the same time. So this is a great way that you can uh, efficiently mine uh, and get the very best from your equipment without it, um, you know, costing you uh, any more. So let's take a look. This is just the actual Bitcoin uh, talk thread. Um, I'll put a link to that in the actual description of this video. And from there, you can actually use uh, the Google download or the mega download and um, download the uh, dual Ethereum and Decreed miner. Um, I've already actually done that. And um, I'm actually going to be showing you on another machine. So I've automatic, sorry, I've already um, logged in. So this is a risky fire one, or sometimes I call it a work one. Um, this machine is a Windows uh, 10 box and it has a, a single 7950 uh, installed within it. Um, at the moment I'm just using the uh, uh, Genoil 1.07 ETH miner um, and we're getting about 15 mega hashes, a little bit over 15 mega hashes there. So it's not overclocked or anything, that's just the standard uh, clock speed, it's just because the card runs a little bit hot in this machine. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to close that down now. And then, um, like I say, I've already actually downloaded the um, dual miner. So this is what the um, zip file um, extracted looks like on the uh, inside. So we've got a readme file, which is always uh, recommended to uh, read that first. Um, I've already qu had a quick um, skim through it, and I think I've got uh, or understand the actual basics of it. So then we've got a start.bat file. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click, and then I'm going to Actually, I'm going to leave that one as it is. I'm going to uh, control and C and copy it. And then I'm going to paste a new one. And I'll just use this one um, for uh, editing. I'll just call it new start. Um, save that. Now I'm going to edit this one. So right click and then go to edit. So in here we have. Um, so it's the call for the actual uh, program itself. Then we've got this. Um, Ethereum pool, so we need to change this to our pool details, and then we've got this um, Ethereum uh, address um, or oh, password there, so that is the username and password. So I just need to change these to uh, my details, um, and I'll have them not too far away actually, it's in this folder most recently. Uh, let's have a look, it should be this one. So this is our um, address and port. Um, I'm just going to copy those over. Uh, this one. So you don't have to add, um, sorry, add in the HTTP, just the actual uh, URL and port. And then we need my um, address. That and it's also on the end of one is a worker name. Um, I think you can add that to a new one, but I'll just leave it out for the time being. Um, add my Ethereum address in there. So then it's got the Ethereum password as X. Um, I'll just leave that as it is. I'm not too sure whether that might cause uh, problems uh, potentially. Um, then for the next part is for the actual decreed pool itself. So we've got the settings there for uh, decreed at supernova uh, and the port. And then we need to change this. I've got my um, username, oh, risky fire, and my worker is worker1 and password, oh, worker1 and the password is x. So this um, should be okay for us. So I'm just going to save that. I know the supernova details are correct. Um, yeah, the dwarf pool one, I'm not too sure whether that X is going to give us any issues. I never um, had to set a password with the uh, dwarf pool before um, because it's just done on your address, not on a, a worker. So we'll have to see. 
Um, let's close those uh, batch files. We can close that folder now as well. Um, okay, so let's see if we can run it for uh, the first time. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it hasn't closed immediately. That's a good start. Uh, so it says uh, a few if pull one specified, second one is specified. It's to detected the uh, card properly. Um, it says about the catalyst drivers. Um, I can't remember what I'm using actually. I think it is. I think it might be fifteen eleven off the top of my head. Okay, so it looks like we've connected to the Ethereum pool, and now we've connected to the uh, Decreed pool. Uh, but we've got a we've got a time out there. The machine that I'm actually um, remote logged into doesn't have the best internet connection, so um, I don't know whether it's a pool sort of issue or a like a local sort of issue. Okay, it looks like we've got a job from the uh, decreed pool. Okay, there's not much uh, happening. So what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, there's uh, the ETH uh, has timed out as well. Um, what I'm going to do uh, is just going to leave it for a few minutes and just um, see what happens. And then I'll come back and we will either um, be running, hopefully, or we might need to uh, tinker with it and, and get it fixed. So I'm just going to leave that running for a few minutes now. Okay, we are back and we are up and running. So um, I left it for a few minutes and that um, Ethereum um, dwarf pool uh, timeout issue did not resolve itself. Um, so what I actually did was um, I edited the batch file. Um, at first I used the, uh, the Ethereum pool.co, uh, which is a pool that I've used previously um, and tried running that, um, but I got the same problem, still like another timeout issue. So um, I'm not too sure exactly what the issue is, but it appears to be the way that this particular um, mining client connects to those pools and um, so yeah it didn't work with uh, dwarf pool and it didn't work with uh, the ethereum pool um, dot co so there might be something in the configuration where you can change it maybe it's something to do with the straight um, connection or something like that or maybe it's the wrong pool or something um, I'll have to look into that in more detail at another time so what I actually did was um, I used the actual pool which is this one here um, us.1.ethpool.org and this port number um, all the freeze um, and then just combine that with this, uh, sorry, this address was actually in the original uh, batch file. So um, I just gave that a quick test and that seemed to work fine. Um, and then I just added my address onto there. So I probably need to register with this pool and then link my address and then I can get my payouts and stuff there. Um, I don't think that actually happens automatically. Um, and the, um, the decreed pool I just left as it was. So it saved that, fired that up. So that was the, the batch file that I'm currently using and then this is the actual client you can see now. Um, so it's mining or dual mining on both uh, uh, sort of algorithms. So you can see the Ethereum here, um, uh, 15 and a half, um, 16, 16. So it's actually a little bit faster than the standard miner. Um, and that was actually reported in the um, on, on some of the blogs that I was reading as well. And the Decreed um, is mining there at 243 mega hash. Um, this is actually the first time I've actually mined um, Decreed, so uh, I don't know how that compares really. Um, I don't really have anything more to say. I presumably that's a reasonable sort of score. I mean, the actual graphics card is a 7950, so I would presume that's kind of a reasonable um, kind of hash rate. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically um, it from here. Um, what I'll probably do is I'll probably keep mining um, overnight and just see whether the client is um, stable, see how it goes. Um, I will personally also need to double check on this um, pool and register with them or do whatever I need to do and to make sure I get my payouts accordingly. Um, but yeah, it looks good. The initial impressions are good. Uh, what I will also do is, um, if let me just open up the uh, MSI Afterburner. Um, like I said, this, uh, this rig does run pretty hot, it is a closed up sort of machine. I uh, was just looking at the actual um, GPU usage, it's obviously fully um, utilized. 
Uh, the fans at 100 percent which is kind of how it normally is and the uh, temperature here is 82 83 which is about where it is previously um like i said this card is not overclocked just because of the heat and cooling issues so i've just left it on standard clocks which is 800 but you can run it up to i've run it well over a thousand with no problems before um but you've just got to have that adequate cooling which i don't actually have at the moment so yeah i think that's it for this video um guys hopefully you've enjoyed watching and it's been useful for you um as always any questions or comments put those in the comments area below and i'll try to answer as best i can and um yeah till next video thanks for watching take care bye bye